Well, hello, I'm Chris, and this is my hobby stick welding for beginners video. Now, it's a hobby because I'm not a professional welder and I'm not in welding school, but this video is to give you an idea pretty much what I'm going through or just went through to successfully go out there and weld with this machine. Now, I haven't officially welded with it yet. We're still setting everything up. That's why I thought it'd be a good idea to make this video. I've always welded with 110 cheap welders down there and i'm going to recommend that if you're just getting started avoid buying the 110 machines the 220 machine is going to give you a greater range to work with this is stick welding so this is just under an eighth inch thick mild steel up to i would say five sixteenths under a half inch make sure you got some projects don't just go buy a welder to go buy it get you a couple of projects ready me i have a car hauler i want to build i bought a homemade one got some axles and wheels and then we have an eight foot fence project where I have about 50 of these and I'm having to extend them okay so you get the point I have two projects so it's time in my life to learn how to weld the correct way so this video is for people that just got one of these or something close to this either you're having problems or you just need somebody to explain it to you in a way you can understand so buying the welder is the easy part but about 90% of the people that take this thing home and open it up, you're not going to just start welding. There are a lot of things that have to be understood before you're going to go out there and have a good time with this welder. Number one is your instructions. The first thing you have to familiarize yourself with is the input. Okay, so recommended input. This is so freaking important. Research this before you even buy your welder to know if you're even going to be able to to use it in your house or wherever you live so blah 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 what does that mean on this it's right there on the freaking front right there but if you don't know you have no clue that that's what that's talking about so i went through my plugs and trying to find some stuff whatever avoid old plugs if you're gonna just install your welder look at this this one looked like it was great but it's loose on the back that is absolutely not what you want to install your new welder with see if I can make it almost so whatever welder you buy get you a freaking notepad book a good one and you make damn sure that you always have this with your welder okay so I am so sorry I am so frustrated because my printer ran out of ink I was trying to print out the one for the AC225 this is not the one we're gonna write it down right here so the AC225 calls for a 50 amp it says super lag but if you live in a house with breakers you're not going to get no super lag breaker you're just going to have to put a regular breaker okay minimum input 14 on this one it says 10 gauge is acceptable now 50 amp with a 10 gauge anybody that knows anything about electricity this is all wrong this needs a number six wire at least well there is some kind of code out there for dedicated welding circuits that does allow for this just because the duty cycle on that machine is 20 percent okay but you may need to check that out so i bought this 50 amp so i can run my welder so right now for that washer we have a 30 amp breaker 10 gauge existing wire about a 65 foot run of cable now this is very important because it'll say that exceeding 100 foot you should upgrade to 8 gauge at least so the whole point of all this I'm trying to tell you is just read the freaking instructions it's so important if you want good results okay so also in the instructions it talks about duty cycle duty cycle is talking about increments of 10 minutes pretty much you have two minutes of arc for 10 minutes and the reason i'm talking about that is because your machine will usually just turn off or quit welding it's very important that when your machine does shut off that you do not turn this off leave it on because it has a fan in there that's cooling down that transformer i see so many people when the machine shuts down oh well let's let it cool down don't do that leave the machine on so the worst thing about this welder is the 20 percent duty cycle but that's fine for diy guys now, I was about to buy one professional welder. I went into a distributor. Not that one. I can't afford that one. And I actually got a real good deal on this. This is a notch under the 180C. 
you can't buy this one at Northern Tool or Home Depot. You have to go to distributor. Got a deal on that one and this one for even less than my 180C would have cost. Now, before you hate on this one, this is a distributor catalog, the first page. They still freaking sell it right there. But it's a bit overpriced. You can get these for 309 right now plus tax at the big box stores. And that's the DC version. Uh, you don't really need that, but if you can find one of these used, definitely get the freaking DC version. We got to go into the panel to change this breaker. If you do not feel comfortable, do not do this. Damn. Power back on. Turning the breaker on. Okay, so now this is a problem situation for a lot of people. We used our washer and dryer plug. Now we have a 10 gauge wire with a 50 amp breaker. It should be a number six wire. So we cannot use this for our dryer. If we do, in which a lot of people do that kind of stuff, you can risk burning your freaking house down or wherever you live. That's why the electricians say that has to be a dedicated circuit for the welder that little remnant i just turned it into a temporary extension cord uh, just make sure at least buy 50 amp plugs I bought a new plug that's 50 amp 250 volt okay so this is our test thing it's hot right now so okay so i'm talking about that a lot because it is so important that you study that ask me any questions about it if you're confused a little bit i'll tell you to the best of my knowledge so that's another problem with buying a used welder is everything can be completely screwed up you need to go on there and look at the book uh, we have the ground on the bottom on this one there they look the same it's AC but it is specifying that this lower cable is for our ground okay you want all this super freaking tight super tight so I got this because I bought this magnet to just clamp it on there anywhere it's a lot easier Okay, so one of the things that's going to hurt you when you start welding is not knowing a professional or experienced welder. You might think he's trying to mess with you or confuse you on purpose. He talks about metal thickness, rods, what amps you're using, what type of welder. And if you just study it and stick with it, eventually this guy, everything he says will make sense and you will really appreciate your experience, a professional welder guy. What's going to hurt you the worst when you start welding is this guy right here. This guy talks about it's easy, anybody can do it, don't worry, I'll show you. He might not own a welder, but if he does, it's usually a 110 flux core plugged into a 50 foot extension cord. This guy is your worst enemy when you start welding. Don't even listen to him. Okay, so when you first start welding, we're just welding mild steel, regular carbon steel. Uh, but there's AC and DC rods, it's a 7018 AC. Just always look at that, familiarize yourself with this kind of stuff. If the rod don't have any numbers on it, and see these 7018s have been open and left out, uh, pretty much uh, ruins the rod. So just be aware of stuff like that. Keep them closed, keep them inside, away from moisture. So let's talk about what we need to understand before we start welding. Okay, so this is 90 degrees. So supposedly you want to start off 15 degrees, just a little bit like that whenever you first start welding. Okay, so we got that 15 degrees. Okay, so when you start your weld, you're going to start it by striking an arc. Okay, so a lot of times you just rub it like that and it'll start making electric stuff. And this is an eighth inch rod. As soon as it starts arcing, you want to pick it up about an eighth of an inch. And that's, how, that's where you want your arc to be. So you're going to strike it and then pick it up about an eighth of an inch. And that's your arc right there. Now, in the book, it says not to strike there directly at the sparks to study at your little welding pool or puddle and you'll see that i don't know if we're going to be able to show that much in this video but i think the guy at well.com he really uh, took some time to figure out how to photograph that but in other words you're not looking at all the shiny stuff you're just looking at this little molten uh, puddle okay so when you first get started i would highly recommend you find a kit like this it's going to have mostly everything you need most important thing when you start welding is an auto darkening helmet don't even try to play around with that stupid puppet mask or whatever they give you with a handle you have to have one of these auto darkening or you're gonna just delay your progress so bad and all this stuff the gloves is because it's gonna be hot okay it comes with a magnet thing and some sleeves 
Just get you a long sleeve shirt. I went to Northern Tool and got that freaking uh, welding shirt or whatever it is. Okay, so I'm not one of them dudes that goes crazy on safety all the time. But this is absolutely necessary 100%. Go get you a whole bunch of safety glasses, gear and protection. You really are going to need all that stuff or you're going to freaking have a, a horrible time. I would highly recommend having a couple of welding projects before you just go buy a welder. The worst thing you can do is to go into a scrap pile right there, just pull random stuff out and start welding it together. That's going to uh, just delay your progress so bad. You got to think of this stuff as metal thicknesses. You need to get you one of these opposed to just that little keychain thickness gauge. That's for uh, when you get some more experience. If you don't have one of these, I mean, you're not just going to freaking take a tape measure and say, oh, well, this is uh, uh, about an eighth of an inch. It doesn't work like that. You got to know exactly what this is. We have three uh, just kind of normal project size stuff here. Zero it out. We got 1.9. We really have no idea what that is. Let's mic this one. And then this one is 2.42. So we said a sixteenth of an inch is the thinnest we could weld with this machine. So we're going to put that at the top. And if you forgot math or don't know, a division sign like this is a fraction. Those dots represent the numbers. So 1 divided by 16, 1 divided by 16 is going to give us a decimal so we can go ahead and 0 0.062 okay so now we're trying to figure what these are we're just going to have to punch in common thickness sizes and see what we get okay so 3 16 let's check that out okay 1875 this is most likely going to be 3 16 1 8 there you go 125 Okay, so that's very important to familiarize yourself. So when you put a mic on there, you know that that's your metal you're consistently using because when you first start welding, there's a big problem with trying to weld eighth inch to quarter inch. You get what I'm saying? That's the problem with going in the junk pile. But whenever you're trying to butt weld uh, two different thicknesses for the first time, you're going to run into issues where you're blowing holes through this or just making a big mess. So that's why I'm just trying to tell you it's very important to uh, stick with the same gauge steel or thickness at first. Okay, so now we know what size these are. Let's go out there and get ready to weld these things. Okay, so another thing that's going to hit you is the price of steel. Don't even try to go to Home Depot and buy this stuff. It's super expensive. Try to find you a steel supply. Look for remnants, scraps. Even go to scrap yards. Do whatever you can. I highly recommend when you start welding to get you three grinders or you're going to be switching out these wheels and it's going to drive you crazy. There's all kinds of tools. You can go to Northern Tool and uh, get different types of stuff. Grinding discs. You're going to need a whole bunch of grinding discs. Everything you, they pretty much sell there. So whenever you're doing work like this, even with a wire brush, it doesn't matter. You must wear safety glasses all the time. No questions asked. Okay, so when you first start welding, you really want to practice on clean stuff. I know they say 6011s can weld over dirty, but when you're first starting, clean everything. Okay, so when you first start welding, you're not really aware of how important the ground cable is. And any time you clamp to it, you've got to clean this off down to bare metal. Okay, so this is probably the most dangerous tool. If you're going to buy one of these, leave the guard on there. Uh, be careful. Pay attention to the rotation of that. If you hit this the wrong way when you're cleaning them apart, it's going to jump out of your hand. It's going to cut you. Another option would be to get you a sandblaster. This works 10 million times easier whenever you're trying to prep all your stuff to practice welding. Very important, we got it clean to clamp our ground. So learning how to clamp this stuff up at first is going to drive you freaking crazy. So just bear with it and you'll get it. These are the amps. When I talk about the amps, that's all we're doing is we're just switching it. Okay, so another thing I wish somebody would have told me is to go to Home Depot and buy every size rod or every type of rod they have. These are the six you're going to see at Home Depot. It's basically just 3 32nds and 8 inch. Those are the two diameters rods they have. And that's the numbers you need to know. 60, 11, 13, 70, 18. This is the starter stuff. I personally hate 6011. I want to give those away to somebody. I can't stand those things. 
Maybe I'll learn how to use them in the future. My favorite rod is a 6013 so far. Now this one, sometimes I get holes in it, so I need more practice on this one. But right now, 6013 is my favorite. Uh, but pretty much, if you can afford them all, buy them. Because every rod is kind of like a magic wand that does a different spell on welding metal. Okay, so the price of steel is going to hit you real hard. So you're going to have to go dig in dumpsters and stuff and get pieces of metal to practice on unless you just have a lot of money. These are just brackets, random things I found here and there. We're going to start off with the thinner stuff. This is some 16th uh, of an inch, super thin, like some kind of uh, framing brackets or something. So if you want to have a good time welding, you got to get dressed to weld. So we're just going to put on some of the stuff that came in that kit right there and my welding shirt I got. And you have to do this. If you don't, you're going to have a horrible time. You have to wear gloves. Now these gloves, if you've, now if you've never worn gloves like this before, they might seem bulky, but you have to wear these because if you touch that place that you just welded, it'll, it'll burn the skin right off your hands. Worse than any horror movie you've ever seen. So these are a must. Don't even waste your time trying to start welding without an auto darkening hood. That whole kit right there was like 50 or $60 and it came with this. Okay, so this isn't so much of a, an actual welding welding video because I just started using this machine. I'm practicing. So, okay, so the first test we're just welding some 16th inch thin stuff with a 16th inch rod. This is a 6013. We got 40 amps. Let's see what this machine does. Okay, so when you first start welding, don't even try to weld like this where you can't see. You got to weld like from the side like this. Oh, God dang it thought the machine was off okay so we got our drag angle like at 15 degrees to start and we're gonna see how this well 16th inch with a 6013 on 40 amps I don't weld for a living I don't even know how to discuss what I'm looking at but all I do know is that how the weld sits up kind of high it should sink in a little bit more but that's a problem with thin stuff you turn your amps up, you're going to melt holes right through this. Let's try to see if we can jump in and finish that weld. So we weld a 16th inch thick with a 16th inch rod at 40 amps. Uh, if I turn it up any higher, it wants to burn holes through it, but that's fine. If your beads are ugly, just grind them off flat at the top until you learn how to put a better bead on them. Okay, so when you first start welding, you need to absolutely try to destroy that weld and see if it breaks. If it cracks or breaks off, you need to learn how to get that in there a little bit better. Let's see what this one does. Okay, so it did break. Let's weld this piece and see if we can get it down in there better. So we don't want to turn the amps up because we don't want to burn holes through. So we're going to kind of go a little bit slower and we're going to start doing a little bit of a pattern instead of a straight line. Okay, so we spent a little more time and got that pattern a little bit wider. Let's see if we can break this one now. Okay, so it's very important to try to destroy your weld. So we hit about five or six times and we're looking for that weld to break and it bends before it breaks. So. Uh, it's our 16th inch it worked out pretty good okay so we got some eighth inch right here and the thicker you go uh, you want to bevel the ends like with a 45 we'll do that on the thicker stuff we'll just bevel this one a little bit so this is eighth inch we're using a 6013 332 rod at uh, 90 amps okay we're gonna practice putting our tacks on the end Okay, so that looks okay. I'm gonna try to turn the amps up a little bit more. Okay, so you see turn the amps up. It did lay the weld down a little bit flatter. Looking better. Now let's try with 6011 is the rod that I hate the most. So 6011, 330 seconds at 90 amps. Okay, so the eighth inch is kind of tricky because it's still kind of thin. Okay, so 6013 at 75 amps, 6013 at 90 amps and then the 6011 at 90 amps. I don't even like 6011, so 
we can work on that a little bit long a little bit more okay so this is 316s i think that when the steel gets thicker it's a little bit easier because you can turn your amps up and not burn holes through it so okay so we're gonna do six half of a 6011 half of a 6013 at 90 amps see what happens you know i'm not even gonna try with a 6011 i don't like 6011 okay so when you first start welding the thicker stuff is a lot easier so challenge yourself and start with the thin stuff so that's a 3 16 that looks pretty good and we can definitely improve on that but it looks good so far so we were playing around with 3 32nd rods get a feel of those first now we're moving up to the eighth inch 60 13. now this is whenever it starts feeling like a real welder we got our amps up to i think a 120 and this is when things kind of get a little more intense so be prepared for the eighth inch rod So we're 8th inch 6013 on 316s, uh, answer at 120. You see the bigger and hotter we go, it actually starts looking more like a weld is supposed to look. So just keep that in mind that things are going to be sketchy, weld and thin stuff. Because now you can turn your heat up. So we got that kind of figured out. Uh, let's try quarter inch and uh, get this video finished. Okay, so this is like quarter inch. Uh, when you weld thicker stuff like this, you have to bevel the edge to get down. Uh, and get a penetrating uh, weld in there. 6013 eighth inch. Our amps are at 125. We're gonna weld quarter inch now. So first time in my life welding quarter inch steel. 125 amps, 6013 eighth inch rod, and looks pretty good. I guess that's what they call undercut. I'm not really 100% sure somebody knows let me know but I okay so i might make a video when i learn a little bit more but for right now that's it if you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe and thanks for watching